So one of the biggest takeaways from the rematch between Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury is utilizing proper footwork to protect yourself and set up your offense in the ring. If there's one thing you could learn from this fight, it's this concept. The fighter with the better footwork will hold a massive advantage over his opponents. So let's take a look at some of these sequences. So Fury steps in with a jab and Wilder tries to step away but completely loses his balance and abandons his fighting stance by stepping back with his lead foot which crosses his legs. As we can see from his pitiful counter attempt, he is now completely vulnerable to pretty much anything Tyson Fury could throw. And as you can see Tyson Fury is, is still in his fighting stance, he didn't abandon his stance stepping forward and is now able to launch an attack on Wilder. And there we see Fury freely attack Wilder again because he noticed Wilder didn't have his feet set. See how Fury keeps his stance while stepping forward? He steps forward with his lead foot first so that he remains in his boxing stance and has his feet set to punch. We even see after the attack, Fury grabs control of Wilder to prevent a possible counter. He even lands an uppercut on the inside because his head control on Wilder allowed for the opening. And then we also see him lean on Wilder in the clinch to make him carry his weight, but we'll get into that later. Here once again Fury steps in with a jab and Wilder steps back with the wrong foot again, completely abandoning his fighting stance. Fury doesn't capitalize on it this time, but this is bad because Wilder doesn't have his feet set to come back with a counter. He should be stepping back with his rear foot first so that he keeps his boxing stance to protect himself and have his feet set to punch back. Instead he crosses his feet, leaving himself completely vulnerable and even gives up more ground than he should because of it. Let's look at Floyd Mayweather stepping back with proper footwork. Notice how Floyd steps back with his rear foot first so he could keep his boxing stance and come back with a counter. Now see Wilder step back with his lead foot first and can't come back with a counter. As you can see there is nothing wrong with stepping back. Taking one step back from a punch can be a very effective way to set up a counter punch as long as you don't baby giraffe it like Wilder. This shows that this wasn't the result of a lack of energy in his legs from Wilder, but rather a lack of fundamentals as basic as day one footwork. So we all saw from the fight that Fury's game plan was to pressure Wilder because he noticed at the end of the first fight that Wilder can't fight moving backwards. Fury got Wilder to start moving backwards in this fight by attacking him with constant shoulder fades mixed in with a long step jab. Notice how Fury immediately pressures Wilder and starts constantly feinting at him with his shoulder and this shoulder feint looks like a start of a step jab because the step jab is what his weapon was to attack Wilder. So every time he used this subtle shoulder feint, Wilder would step back. And this is how Fury got Wilder to start moving backwards so he could apply his pressure. And there you see him attack him with the step jab, that very long step jab. The brilliance of this game plan comes from the fact that Fury has a longer reach than Wilder. By standing at a range where only he can land a jab, Fury is free to feint the step jab or commit to the step jab without worrying about a counter coming back. And this keeps Wilder confused as to when the punch is actually coming. And this confusion makes Wilder overreact to every feint. And when he overreacts to every feint, this makes him want to back up in order to reset the situation. So if you have a longer reach than your opponent, this is a very good strategy that you could apply. Just to emphasize my point, we see here at the very start of the fight that Fury is standing at his step jab range and constantly Fainting at Wilder, there you see him shoot the jab, it causes Wilder to back up. You see, once again, he's constantly fainting with that shoulder and with his head to threaten the step jab, and then he finally shoots it and makes Wilder back up. We see again Fury stepping forward, pressuring Wilder. You see a faint, faint, and we see every time he faints, we see Wilder step back. So another faint, faint, and then jab and gets him. So whenever Fury missed the step jab, he didn't just retract his punch and give Wilder a chance to counter with his atomic right hand. Instead, he uses his already extended arm to grab a hold of Wilder's head and smother any counter attempt. 
As mentioned earlier, he also started leaning on Wilder in order to make him carry his weight and tire him out for the later rounds. So every time he missed his jab, he would lean on him in the clinch and the longer he would make him hold his weight, the more tired Wilder would become. The more tired Wilder would become, the less power he would have on that big right hand, which is his only way of coming back in this fight. And this is a, a legal tactic. It's a little bit dirty, as you can see. Uh, Tyson Fury did get deducted a point later on in the fight, but this is legal as long as you're not excessive as Tyson Fury. But Tyson Fury did not care about it because he was winning the fight. So once Fury had Wilder confused from the feints when the jab was coming, Fury was able to set up power punches behind the jab because he knew Wilder couldn't get a read on Fury's timing. So Fury's step jab catches Wilder off guard. Wilder tries to duck under the follow-up punch, but it's too late and gets caught and dropped. This punch did land behind the ear, which is technically illegal, but Wilder ducked into it, causing the punch to land the way it did. So you have to count it as a clean knockdown. We also have to remember this is Windmill Wilder we're talking about. The guy who whips his right hand around people's heads and gets knockouts punching the back of people's necks. I don't have a problem with it, and I don't have a problem with this knockdown. And so Wilder never recovered from that knockdown, so I'm not going to break down the rest of the fight. But the last thing I wanted to bring up is that Wilder had the tendency to reach to parry Fury's punches, which got him in trouble a lot. You never want to reach for punches because your opponent can go around your glove and hit you wide open. You want to parry a punch as close to its target as possible and no more. You might see guys do this to create space, but you especially don't want to do this against someone with a longer reach than you because they could reach you while you're trying to push away. Wilder is probably used to getting away with this because he doesn't usually fight guys with a longer reach than him. And that's going to do it for this film study. PBC always likes to take down all of my videos with Wilder in it, so if you're seeing this now, you're one of the lucky ones to catch it before it gets striked. If you saw my last Wilder video before it got taken down, you may know that I predicted Deontay Wilder to beat Tyson Fury by decision in this rematch. And in typical fashion, I was wrong with another prediction. I thought Fury won every round in the first fight, except the rounds he was knocked down in, and that fight ended up being ruled a draw by ridiculous judges. I thought as long as Wilder doesn't get stopped in this fight, he wasn't going to lose a decision in Vegas. I was expecting a near repeat of the first fight with Wilder getting a robbery decision. I thought Fury had to get a KO to win, and I didn't think he would get it. Now that I think about it, I'm curious how the judges had this fight before it was stopped. Also, the excuse that his ring walk costume tiring his legs out is hilarious, and I'm with Stephen A. But you cannot come out publicly and blame a costume. You can't do that! That's just embarrassing! I mean, it's just embarrassing! Even though his costume very well could have tired his legs out, he shouldn't have said that publicly. He gains nothing from it. Just be honorable in defeat and don't make the same mistake in the third fight. Which brings me up to the third fight, which at this time is confirmed to be happening. You may think I'm stupid for this, but if this fight takes place in Vegas, I'm actually predicting Deontay Wilder to win a decision. If he doesn't wear another heavy costume and adjust his footwork, I think he'll be fresh enough to prevent Fury from stopping him again, and he'll win a robbery decision. But if this takes place outside of Vegas, then I have Fury winning easily. As always, thank you all for watching. If you liked what you saw and want to see more, please subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Thank you all for watching. Nine months, but fuck it, it's all in due time. I turn the blood to a rope who dreams of being a beetle. Don't want to, I need to. You gotta learn to keep it so weak. But when you come up in a place where everyone got a peaceful, but ain't peaceful, this is just part one way to the sea. Oh, this bitch.